You've probably heard it before. European paganism is the religion of the forests, streams, lakes, and mountain tops. Well, your view on that might change now. Just a little bit, at least. I do, of course, recognize that the molding of our European polytheistic religion is greatly attributed to these landscape features. However, with a lot of newer research, we are finding that not nearly as much of the European continent in ancient times was forested as we have um, thought for very long. That seems to be the traditional view that Europe was a forest once upon a time, one big forest. And this isn't necessarily an invalid or far-fetched assumption to have. It is fully possible that once upon a time, Europe was 80 to 90% forest. But what it comes down to is that the European continent, as well as every other continent, underwent many changes in climate. And with this, you see differences in moisture content from region to region. The levels of precipitation will dictate whether you see a forested landscape or something drier like a grassland or something else dependent on the degree of dryness that you are experiencing in a region. Much of the North American Midwest has long been grasslands, many of which, or really all of which, are experiencing a loss in biodiversity. Whereas you go further east in the North American continent and you see much heavier forest cover and um, the assumption that the European continent used to be one big forest largely resembles the notion here in North America that the eastern side of our continent was so densely covered in forest that from the southern Appalachians, a squirrel could jump from tree to tree all the way to the northernmost Appalachians and the northernmost part of the state of Maine. Without ever touching the ground, it could jump from limb to limb on trees, which um, this notion is not something that I would go as far as saying is a total myth, but it is greatly exaggerated because it doesn't take into account how much of the southeastern United States are fire-dependent grasslands like pine uplands. You might say that a region like the British Isles that has faced a lot of forest loss over time, over thousands of years, is now effectively a grassland with how much of the landscape makes up of grasses now. It's not naturally occurring, but yeah, essentially it is a grassland. You could argue that. You wouldn't be incorrect in saying it is a grassland. However, the biodiversity in the grasslands that are man-made now in the British Isles would not remotely resemble how high the biodiversity was in parts of Europe that were naturally grasslands. And I'm not only speaking of biodiversity from a plant perspective, but also an insect perspective and really everything. So it's not only interesting to think about how diverse forests in Europe used to be, but also how diverse much of the grasslands must have been too. So in conclusion, grasslands are as embedded within our European cultural heritage as forests are. Me personally, I'm particular to forests, like many other followers of European paganism, more especially boreal forest. I mean, that is my thing. I love studying that most of all out of any ecosystem type in the world. But um, I fully acknowledge how grasslands would have contributed spiritually to our development as a people and would have molded our religion that we follow today.